Hi. Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Sue from Purely Pediatrics. I wanted to take a few minutes today to talk to you about some common rashes in children. As a disclaimer, remember there are many different rashes, many different diagnoses, and many different ways to treat rashes. So please reach out to your pediatrician when you can with regard to rashes that you may not be able to figure out or understand and feel stressed about. So remember that's why we're here. Let them know if you have questions, okay? So to start off with, I'm going to talk about teething rash. If you can see the rash on this little one's face, it looks pretty dry, pretty reddened, right around the mouth, and it can also occur down in the chin into the neck area. Teething creates inflammation, whole body inflammation. So we can see, <clears throat> excuse me, so we can see um, rashes on the bottom, rashes at the face, uh, rashes in between, you know, just inflammation in general. So for a rash like this, what I typically tell families is just make sure you try to keep that area moist with Vaseline if it's dry. If it's real wet appearing, a barrier protection such as Vaseline can also be helpful. And when they stop teething so significantly and stop drooling significantly, that teething rash will start to go away. Remember that teething can happen on and off throughout the first one to two years. So if you become familiar with this rash and you know what it is, you make sure to use that Vaseline and keep an eye out for those new teeth popping through. The next rash is a viral rash. And there, I would say 90% of the rashes that families send to me in, uh, on my texting or my emails is a viral rash. I will always ask if they notice that their little one had any cold symptoms or fevers a week or two before the rash. And oftentimes the, the answer is yes. Viral rashes you can see on this little one, they're just kind of flat reddened areas, look like spots. They can be all over the body, can happen all of a sudden and generally occur after a, a virus starts to leave our body. Again, this is caused from inflammation from a virus. Generally, there's nothing that needs to be done. The rash may be itchy at times, and if that's the case, and it's whole body, the best way to treat that would be using Benadryl, um, and that's something that your doctor can help you to dose for the weight according to your child. Benadryl is an antihistamine that can help with the itching as the, the child is starting to clear the rash. So viral rashes are super common. Always think to yourself, oh, did we have cold symptoms or fevers a week or two ago? If the answer is yes. The chances are that rash is viral. Another viral rash, just another uh, appearance. You can tell again that it's really um, flattened, uh, reddened, a little spotty. Generally, oftentimes doesn't bother the kids. It bothers the parents more than the, the kids. But it goes away with your intervention. Hand foot mouth rash is also a viral rash. And I wanted to show you this hand because this is what it can look like. It can look like red spots on the palms, red spots on the feet, it gets around. It can even be whole body if it's the first time your little one has been affected. It generally gets around the mouth as well. This is just a classic pattern of this virus. There's not many viruses that affect the palms of our hands and the soles of our feet, but hand foot mouth rash is one of them. Another name for this virus is Coxsackie. Not that you have to know that, but this is something that um, you may have diagnosed in your little one as well. Scabies is a rash that is, it can come at all ages, um, from babies all the way to adulthood. And scabies is a rash, if you look at this picture, I want you to look at how the dots kind of follow in lines. What this is, is this is a tiny mite that can get under the skin and we can't see it visibly, but we generally can catch them from other people that have it and may not know. It can run in families, so it's something that I'm always, I always try to be aware of. I'll always ask if other family members have the similar rash to this. One classic key for scabies is it's very itchy, very treatable with an over-the-counter medication that you put on the whole body overnight and rinse it off in the morning and generally it's an easy treatment. So if you hear the word scabies from your pediatrician, just know it's an easy treatment. Treating all the family members is really in the best interest of, of the family and it goes away with a matter of time after that treatment. Um, it, it's, it's one of those things that it's more common than you think. So if you're diagnosed with scabies, 
I know that the name doesn't sound so great, but remember it's very common and it's very transmissible. Impentigo. This picture is a little bit, um, <laughs> when I look at the picture, it's probably the worst case with regard to what we call a yellow honey crusted rash. Impentigo is, is from a strep or a staph bacteria that live on the skin. And you'll generally see these honey crusted lesions. It can occur on the face quite frequently, but it can also occur other areas in the body. It is caused from a, a, the bacteria that I mentioned, strep and staph. If it's not in a large distribution, you can treat it topically. And if it's distributed in a way that makes topical care difficult, then it's something that can be prescribed an antibiotic for. Very common. Take a look for that honey crusted lesion. It does spread, so make sure that if you start to notice it, let your pediatrician know and um, try to keep your little one away from others until you get a, a formal diagnosis. Well, eczema, this is something very, very common, does tend to run in families. Another name for eczema is atopic dermatitis. And this just means that there's an inflammation of the skin. We don't always understand why that is, but again, it can run in families. It can also run prominently with little ones and adults with asthma and allergies. Severe eczema in babies clues us in that there may be a risk for food allergies. So oftentimes with eczema, we will talk to families about seeing an allergist as well. Eczema can be very stubborn, very hard to manage, but it's one of those things that you want to make sure to be on top of. Some of the mainstays of eczema care are ointments such as Vaseline or Aquaphor, putting them on frequently and making sure that skin is moist. If that skin looks dry and crusty, then you're not using enough of the ointment. The mainstay of eczema care continues to be for flares is uh, topical steroids. And topical steroids can decrease the inflammation and it can also keep that skin from becoming infected. When we see babies with eczema, we try to be on top of that care with their parents because it does put them at risk for infection. We always want to make sure we talk uh, with families about other risk factors too and make sure that if it's very hard to control, then we will often recommend dermatology for these kids as well to stay up on their care and make sure we're doing the best that we can. Diaper dermatitis. I actually made a, a video about this that's... Um, listed in the uh, YouTube videos as well. Diaper dermatitis is a dermatitis that can be very stubborn as well. And this picture is classic. You kind of see that there's some red wounds. Looks like this, the top layer of the skin has been removed. This is generally a stubborn rash that is not resolved with antifungals, ointments, thickly placed ointments. It can be tough to deal with. So if you take a look, if you go back and take a look at, at uh, some of the products that I had mentioned in my previous diaper dermatitis video, barrier protection is the best course of action for this. We don't always understand what, why little ones get diaper dermatitis, but it is more common than we think. Barrier protection, what that means is I want you to actually take that ointment, uh, such as triple paste, and thickly frost that bum with every diaper change. If we are unable to make a difference with this rash using the thickly applied ointments and even gentle steroid, uh, topical steroid creams, what we recommend is looking at some strong barrier protective products such as Ilex paste and Cavalon spray. Those two items are strong barrier protections. Generally, little ones can grow out of this. Uh, it's, their skin is so uh, fragile when they're little, and um, it can go on even until, until they're out of diapers. Unfortunately, that can, can be the case. But keep your, derm keep your pediatrician in the loop. Make sure that you ask the questions that you can. We work with, um, we see diaper rashes frequently, and we always appreciate parents when they reach out to us so we can really help them and do the best that we can. So keep in mind that not all diaper rashes are fungal and many of them are not infections, but they are just inflammation and your pediatrician can help you decipher between the differences. 
Ringworm is something we are asked about a lot as well. This picture is classic ringworm. You can see that it is some central clearing, some um, flaking in the redness around the, this site, and it is generally very itchy. Ringworm is very easily transmissible. You'll often find people in the family um, have it as well, or friends. It can be mistaken for something called numular eczema, and that is something your pediatrician can help you decipher as well. In little ones, numular eczema can look very similar to this, but generally it doesn't have the central clearing, and you don't always see the little dry skin flakes around it. So um, use your pediatrician to help you determine if, if it's ringworm or something called numular eczema. Ringworm is easily treated with an antifungal. It is contagious, so you want to make sure that you don't itch. You can spread it among yourself. And you can spread it among others, so make sure that you stay covered if there's patches that are ringworm on you or your children. Again, very common, very easily treatable, and often mistaken for eczema. So use your pediatrician now. Again, another picture of a viral rash, just how it can affect the hands, how you can see the red bumpy skin. Um, and viral rashes can look really scary, but they're not. And that's where we come into play to help you determine if that's what you're dealing with. All right, you guys, thank you so much. Uh, that's it for now. Um, this is the presentation for rashes. This will be available to you to take a look at at any time. And um, I thank you so much for listening. And if there's questions, please feel free to ask right on our Purely Pediatric Facebook page or within our Mighty Network group. Thank you so much, all. Have a great day.